first uh, speech of Roberto in opening of the, of the round table. Uh, I don't know if you have only two, two examples of yes. uh, conspiracy construction, so it's very empirical. Maybe somebody has a more general introduction. We discuss you are the first, then we have uh, every other uh, one. Uh, uh, The, the final uh, conclusion of the, of the, of the seminar, applying uh, to the No, no. no. Yeah, well, okay. Uh, I get a little bit to, 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 to say because uh, I have a speech in the afternoon, so uh, I cannot repeat something and then have something, something new. So. Uh, my, my topic uh, in the <coughs> afternoon would be divided into parts. The first one is a general, uh, general overview of the conspiracy theory and probably I will tell a lot of things that have already been told in this uh, symposium, but fortunately my speech uh, will be in Italian, so 90% of, of the present will not understand it, so, uh, okay. And I speak uh, for the other people who will come to that. The second part are some analysis of procedure uh, of how to build up a conspiracy, how to, to connect uh, discarded uh, elements in order to design a, a single idea of a, of a plot. And uh, I will, I shall quote today one of the, uh, of the arguments that uh, appear frequently on the internet uh, in order to show that uh, September 11th was, as you know, a conspiracy, the towers were destroyed, were um, destructed by the Jews, by Bush, by, by a lot of other people, not by, <coughs> by Bin Laden. So one of the arguments that uh, you can find uh, on the internet is that uh, New York City has 11 letters, Afghanistan has 11 letters, uh, the Ramson Yusebel, the, the terrorist that uh, had announced uh, the, 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 the plot has 11 letters. Uh, George W. Bush has 11 letters. The two Twin Towers uh, designed an 11. And New York is the 11th state of the, 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 the U.S. The first uh, pl uh, plane that uh, crashed uh, against the towers uh, uh, was the flight number 11. Uh, that uh, flight uh, brought 92 passengers, and 9 plus 2 makes 11. Uh, the flight 77 that uh, was crashed and circled against the towers um, brought uh, 65 passengers, and 6 plus 5 makes 11. The date 9-11 is uh, same of the emergency number uh, uh, of the American phones, 9-11, which is some, uh, an internal sum, 9 uh, plus 1 plus 1 makes 11, and the total of the victims uh, of all the three uh, planes was 254, which uh, internal sums makes 11. Um, the September 11 is the day, is the 254th day of the calendar, and the entire internal sum of 254, 2 plus 5 plus 4 makes 11. So you see that uh, uh, at the Twin Towers there was a, a conspiracy prepared according to a lot of catalytic uh, speculations. It works very well. There are some objections to these reconstructions. New York has 11 letters, only if you add a city, New York City, if not, it has not. Afghanistan has 11 letters, but the terrorists didn't come from Afghanistan, but from Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Lebanon, Arab Emirates, and Ramsin Yusef has 11 letters. Uh, 
or if you use a certain transliteration, but it, it is said of you that you, you transliterate yourself, uh, the day it doesn't work. George W. Bush has 11 letters only if you put uh, the middle initial, and uh, as initial and not uh, as an entire name, the Twin Towers designed at 11, but even the second in Roman, uh, in Roman numbers. Uh, the flight 77 has not crashed against one of the towers, but against the Pentagon. Uh, and he didn't brought the 65 but 59 passengers. The total of the victims was not of 254 but 265, and so on and so forth. So in any case, you cannot uh, uh, recover your 11. You've lost uh, uh, 11. You have to manipulate the uh, if you choose the, the example in the right way, you can obtain from this ensemble of fact not 11, but 13, or 10, or 666, which is, as we know, the number of the beast. So, on the, on the line of this way of reasoning that returns in every speculation about conspiracies, plots, and so on and so forth, and uh, inspired by the crowd which I speak today, I imagine a, a, a plot uh, concerning the Antichrist uh, which is evident in the Last Supper of Leonardo. So is my Da Vinci uh, code. Of the numeric values of the letters of Judah 
gives uh, uh, again 78, which internal sounds gives 15, and the internal sounds gives 6. This double uh, underlined apparition of the number 6 <laughs> we bring to multiplicate 111 per 6, and we get 666, the number of the beast. Uh, all those coincidences cannot be casual. In denouncing the trace of Christ, announces at the same time the event of the Antichrist, which number is 666. Naturally, in order to, to make my, my calculation to, to, to work, I have decided to, to appeal to call Petrus and Johannes in Latin and Matteo in Italian. Judah was in Italian and was known as Judas. Ultima Coena in Latin, and there was no reason to use Latin in, in, in Palestine. And in order, in order to get uh, 111, I have subtracted from 121 the Ten Commandments and not the um, uh, the five um, of the Lord of the seven works of corporal misericord. But uh, so happens with the numerology and with numbers, you can do everything you want. So, in order to call down somebody who is excessively uh, credulous, uh, everything I told was false. But uh, it works for every other uh, speculation about the conspiracy.
or analyzing the legal of judicial theory of conspiracy. Because uh, I think that uh, the legal theory of conspiracy uh, presuppose uh, or always uh, some kind of metaphysical case that uh, can see inside the hidden text of the law. And so is the, the, the image that I was uh, spent some words also this, uh, on this point. And, and uh, on this problem, the, the law of nature implies a question of vision, even if uh, it is a somewhat paradoxical one. It, in that it is not natural, but the source of natural and humanity that originally founds and authorizes legal order. The example is uh, very, um, very known, well known. Uh, it's a moralizing uh, images of evil. The story is uh, on uh, November 5, uh, 1605. Uh, uh, Guido Fox and other uh, Roman Catholic uh, sympathizers uh, attempted to blow up the Houses of Parliament, the Supreme Court of England. The conspirators managed to smuggle several barrels of gunpowder into the cellars below, below the parliamentary meeting chambers where King James uh, was due to address the legislature. The explosion never took place because a regular elliptical letter warned the king not to attend. A source of the sellers, a friend of the conspirators, as the lawyer say, in flagrante delicto, in the very act of committing the crime. The earlier image dates from 1631 and shows a shadowy and terrible satanic approaching the castle come out. The David is portrayed as a dark outline a spectre, with the head of a horse, the tail of a goat, and webbed feet. Is he darkness visible and false by implication? Rather obviously shares the quality of the shades as he is presumed presumably apprehended by the lantern world who moves towards this transitional figure. The question to be posed of this image of the actor is that of what of the conspiracy is visible? What is visible of the conspiracy? If everything is shadow and the deed is opus tenebrarum, a work of darkness, then in reality its most obvious feature what would be its invisibility, not visibility. It is an impossible image, a representation of invisibility. That folks, it is in flagrante depicto, it's a game with a rich rule, flagrante delicto, which is to say shown in the initial commission of the evil act. This takes the form of a divine eye, a gaze, with a physical gaze, looking down on the scene of the crime. Everything is visible to an panoptic debate. Darkness is no obstacle and even the cellar. Metaphorical the underworld, Satan's regime, hell is pierced and unveiled by the occult death. More than that, to see is to know. To see more is to know more. To be alive is to be visible. To be visible, however, implies, uh, implies a limit on vision in that such visibility precedes divide the human and mortal from the angelic and divine. Satan is a spectrum, uh, an area of sign or poor shadow, darkness visible as an impress and symbol of the other scene. We exist, and St. Paul fondly reminds us, in darkness. Nunc videmus per speculum in enigma. We see now the visible, invisible realm of the divine origin of law. The political theology of law is evident enough in this image of force and this 
kind of conspiration. Namely, that this terrestrial is dubious, that was it visible on earth is but a faint reflection of another form. Knowledge is not so much a question of what we see, but of what we see through the visible of what is not apparent or of this earth. God, structure, immemorial time, a natural law, all short, share a supervisibility, and for this reason, lawyers treated the shadowy realm of law as a dominion of sign or symbols, of a greater being and power above, as the humanist jurist Andrea Ranciato defines the image, pictura, is a false truth, very as false. It is merely the figure of a, a, an absence, a simulacrum, an index and reference to an absent source. This implies that what is visible is symptomatic. It figures and refers to prior and precedent causes. The image is the mark of an absence, the sign of something, or more properly, of some known thing that is not present and instant. This truth and its falsity. In being false, in being mere signals, however, the image offers an index, a reference, and path to a higher and longer lasting verity. This evidence is also the falsa veritas of a legal theory of conspiracy in the law, focusing the problem of the metaphysical structure of the visibility of every law. as 
one grammatical figure. I think we can see we can see different areas of contemporary mythology. One area is represented by fiction. For instance, literary or film genre. Vampire myth is typically part of a, a genre. And we also have maybe uh, we have also have a, a particular a, a particular uh, film or uh, book genre or literary genre which has to do very much with the theme of conspiracy in which is spy stories. Uh, spy stories is always about secret societies. Uh, Spectre is a typically a big conspiracy to uh, master the world and so on. And, uh, but in general this is part of the of, of, of the of the myth galaxy and we'll go back to that. Another part of the myth galaxy has to do with information which may be formalized information that is uh, journalistic news that are, that are full of myths. Everybody knows that. I mean, uh, Walter Lippmann demonstrated that, that very well in public opinion. If there were there weren't myths, we could not have news which are based on the structure of already known narratives, um, which are inserted into the reality of fact. To false truths, if you want, it's a, it's a very good case. But we also have the other case, and we we'll go back to that, which is what uh, uh, sociologist uh, Shibutami called improvised news. Improvised news are rumors, and in, any, and in other words are uh, uh, metropolitan, what are called urban legends. Uh, urban legends that are improvised information. And we have the area which is very important of political myths. And then we have also something more. It's a galaxy, as I said. So it includes a, 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 a more, a, a, less, a less clearly describable area which goes from one point to another. Uh, as I always say to my students who are a little bit disillusioned, uh, uh, romantic love is a big myth that is all around, all around our mythical galaxy. Uh, romantic love is a very interesting case of myth because we all believe it. It's not true that myths are things we don't believe. Uh, romantic love is the evidence of the opposite. Uh, and I really pity people who don't. Um, but it's myth. In any case, let's go back to our team, conspiracy. In the area of political myth, conspiracy is strategic. Political myth is the kind of myth which has a, a function of legitimation or delegitimation in the political struggle. In contemporary politics, political myth is absolutely strategic. We think of the biggest political myth in contemporary world, which is revolution. Revolution is a classical case of political myth, and it has, has been it has been a, a political myth going from the, 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 the late 18th century to the late 19th, 20th century, and it still has some believers, as we all know. Um, but does conspiracy has a place in political myth? It has a place of delegitimation, of course, and it has also a role of legitimation. Let's take a, a couple of examples. Of course, we all think of the protocols. Protocols have a role of legitimation for Nazi power and at the same time of delegitimation for liberal democracies because they are said to be controlled by a, a power which is not democratic but the opposite. But it's very interesting to think uh, of more classic thought. When Karl Marx says that the state is the best business committee of the bourgeoisie, it is in fact a conspiracy theory. 
you, you think the state is controlled by the rules of liberal constitutionalism, but in fact there is another more occult system of power which controls it. Um, there are cases in history which are very interesting. For instance, in the 1930s, the big battle between Cristeros and President Calles in Mexico in the 1930s, there were two opposite conspiracy theories struggling. Uh, the Cristeros, the, 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 the Catholic but the strong believers, as, uh, as said that Calles was a Freemason, and he was a Freemason, but not other than that, and that there was a Freemason conspiracy to destroy Catholic sentiments of the population. But on the other hand, Calles said that the, uh, uh, the Catholic Church had a plan for controlling the souls of Latin Americans, and you may have had some points, and, uh, uh, and the struggle was on the control of schools, because that was the place where the two opposite conspiracy theories were struggling, the minds of the children. Uh, it was literal. Caius said the Catholic Church wants to control the minds of the children, I, I, uh, uh, and, to, and, to, uh, and, to, and to support their work, control of the world, I do the opposite, I control the mind of the children in order to. You see, it's a very, it's a very typical case. Um, but I want to read, in the last five minutes, I'm, I'm very around but I want to read a, a, a very interesting case of conspiracy theory in modern politics. And it's uh, when uh, the Red Brigades in Italy were uh, uh, interrogating uh, Aldo Moro, president of the Christian, of Christian Democracy, who was uh, their prisoner. And it's a very interesting, a, a very interesting case. Uh, this is the so-called, uh, so-called verbale, the so-called uh, act. Uh, I don't Record. Okay. Okay. The record of the interrogation, because the Red Brigades acted as a tribunal, and uh, and they say that Moro was saying, your question defines NATO as a, a, an organization that creates an anti-guerrilla strategy, but knowing a little bit the times and ways of consultation, planning, uh, actuation of military measure, I can exclude that an immense organism like NATO can have done anything like you suppose, that is, people sitting around the table and saying, we want Italy to become Christian Democrat and to, to fight communists, in these and these ways. Moro was saying our power was really working. And he was saying it is impossible that real power works in the simplistic way you are thinking. But the Red Brigades insisted it's not possible. There, are, there must have been a moment in which you sat around the table to de decide your policy. And this is a this is very interesting point because because the Red Brigades really could not conceive of power except in this simplistic way. Because that was the, their idea of power. That was how they thought power to work, which is secret meetings in which everything is decided. It was impossible for them not, not to decide that. Why? Because that was the idea of the power they had also for themselves. The secret idea of power was the idea of power they applied to the to Christian democracy because they wanted to apply it to themselves. As Anna Arendt once said, the idea of power that Hitler had was exactly the idea that he got from the protocols. He thought that that was power and he wanted to have that power. Exactly. That has never existed. So it was 
beyond what you said before. It's not only that Hitler believed the protocols. He also wanted the protocols from his side. But uh, the, 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 this is, this is uh, a political meaning. Of course, I don't have much time. Uh, of course, there is also conspiracy in improvised information. And it works in a different way. What I want to, to demonstrate is that we have different kinds of means <coughs> working in this galaxy about the idea of conspiracy. Uh, as uh, Massimo uh, explained very well, in many cases, this is an aesthetic and I would say a relational function. That is, a, that is a conspiracy as part of conversation, in which, in which the pleasure is saying something the other people that do not know. Whereas the conspiracy myth, the political conspiracy myth, <coughs> is repeating and repeating and repeating, the uh, conversational improvised information on conspiracy has to have something new in order to have the surprise effect which uh, Brumman say, says is very important for urban legends. If you don't have a surprise, if everybody knows it already, it doesn't work the same way. And that is the reason third, and I'll be very, very short. The third is very interesting because, because the theme, because the theme of conspiracy of secret societies and so on is central to the to all the history of modern fiction. Uh, you find it in uh, Wilhelm Meister, where the life of Wilhelm Meister is secretly guided by the Tower Society. You find it in Balzac, of course. In Balzac you have this this whole big design of of of, 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 of uh, the, the human comedy and um, which is a battle, in fact, between Lambert de l'Histoire de Tampon, that is the friend de la consolation, like the good conspiracy, and the bad conspiracy of the threats of the 13 criminals. So, in Balzac, it's very clear conspiracy is strategic. And you may also think that conspiracy is Balzac himself, because it's a portrait of the author. And this, uh, and this goes through all the history of modern fiction up to Umberto Eco, and before up to Thomas Pynchon. Uh, the, the, the crime of Lot 49 is a novel about conspiracy, for instance. And I, I just want to quote, and I almost finished it, uh, one of my, uh, of my favorite of all the stories, which is The Man Was Thursday, by Gilbert Keith Chesterton. Uh, and maybe you remember the story, I don't want to spoil it. But uh, the story is about, uh, about uh, a, 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 a secret society which is supposed to be bad. And uh, it, 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 after, after all, we see it's very good. So it's a double story of conspiracy. And at the end, the real conspirator is caught. So uh, it's, it's a very interesting case. It's a very interesting case of how in modern fiction conspiracies and secret societies. I don't say they are the same, but they tend very much in me in particular to, 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 uh, to be uh, superposable. Uh, conspiracy and secret societies are at the center of fiction. So, and, 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 and I'm, I'm finished. Before the round, we have to consider the Celestine Prophecy. The Celestine Prophecy by James from Redford. Uh, the Celestine Prophecy, and uh, um, Da Vinci Code sold a lot of copies in a few months. The Celestine Prophecy sold a lot of copies in years and years and years. Uh, it's, it's a real long seller. It, the first edition, you, you all know the Celestine Prophecy? Yeah. It, the, the, the first edition was published by the, the author at his own expenses. And then it went on being sold and sold and sold. And what's interesting is that Celestine Prophecy is something that also in some ways, in some ways also, also the Da Vinci called it. But the Celestine Prophecy, in my opinion, is more interesting. It ties all these aspects. Uh, its success was uh, very much due to word of mouth. People saying, you have to, to read the Celestine Prophecy. You don't know anything if you don't read that book. It portrays itself as a fiction, like the Dominican Code, but in fact it says it's a fiction, but it's not a fiction. False veritas again. And it's a political myth, because the Celestine Prophecy is a sort of alternative New Age myth to the American power. And, and so what we 
people who are feeding, finding, and the, and the cell line case is very interesting. I think we, we, we should study it much more. But also, as I said, the Da Vinci Code, in some ways, approaches that. Uh, we see that in, in this phase, the, uh, the variety of presences of meat, of the conspiracy meat, are converging. But why this is happening, I'll tell you uh, over now. <laughs> Thank you, Peppino, for this uh, very, very interesting thing. Because I think this idea of conspiracy is nice, it's very important, very, and uh, all this symbolism uh, is very uh, important to the push to our, to our work. Maurizio uh, Ferrari is the star of uh, my department, <laughs> and uh, uh, so I am very happy he is uh, here. And more, he is he's working about social objects. Theory is the social object become real through inscription, through, through communication, through in a, in a way to inscription. So maybe uh, we are speaking so much and writing so much about conspiracy that our conspiracy are becoming more and more real through our activities. So please, the floor to the Many thanks. Uh, um, may, but uh, you hear me, for instance, uh, close to the door. Unfortunately, yes, but uh, uh, no, because uh, in fact, uh, if uh, imagine a society without memory, and without documents, there will be a society without conspiracy. Also, a society without uh, plenty of other things, but especially without uh, conspiracy. Uh, but uh, this will not be uh, the subject of my presentation. Uh, I titled my presentation Heidegger's Conspiracy and could be conceived, uh, at least uh, in, my, uh, in my spirit, as the chapter 121 of uh, Foucault Pendulum because uh, I, I reread uh, uh, read Foucault Pendulum uh, uh, for preparing this, uh, this presentation. It is impressive because uh, it's uh, a description of a society in, in which still exist uh, uh, typewriter dactylographers mm -hmm. and uh, already existed the yeah, Apple, for instance. This is uh, impressive. Mm -hmm. Our yeah, page uh, three, 2098 appears as Simonini. So there is uh, a pre uh, existence of Simonini, which is uh, the bad hero of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, the cemetery of Prague. Uh, but this is uh, exegesis of, uh, of Echo's book. Uh, what, what is interesting is that, uh, for instance, Echo speaks uh, the gland of the protocols of Mein Kampf, of a Nazi idea that uh, the hurt uh, was uh, uh, the, the, the empty theory of hurt, and so on and so forth. But uh, at least, as far as I can see, it doesn't uh, speak about uh, Heidegger. Uh, but uh, in fact, uh, uh, there is uh, a kind of conspiracy projected by Heidegger that perfectly fits to uh, uh, Echo's purpose. Because uh, uh, one idea we have about uh, 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 the conspiracy is that the follower of a conspiracy is an idiot, or at least is not so intelligent. Uh, it's a stupid. But so a great philosopher cannot be the follower of a conspiracy. Uh, yes, he can. And uh, uh, Heidegger says to prove that a great philosopher can be a conscious follower of a conspiracy theory. Coming out, uh, uh, seems, it seems that uh, uh, once uh, Heidegger told uh, to uh, a young assistant this uh, uh, sentence, I still haven't the cats out of the bag. In German, is the cats noch gar nicht auf den Sack gelassen. It's a, a way of speaking, and he was speaking about uh, the black uh, notebooks. Uh, uh, the secret of Heidegger it's not the Nazi, because uh, everyone knew that it was Nazi. Uh, for instance, uh, the year before of Copendul appeared the book of variants uh, on Heidegger and Nazism, but uh, uh, for instance, uh, uh, Eco, during the debate on uh, various books, said, but 
that overviews told already about, uh, spoke already about Heidegger and Nazism 30 years ago. What is uh, the new in this, uh, in this debate? Debate. Uh, he was Nazi. Uh, he was uh, uh, never so a problem in being Nazi. He told that it was an adumite and hogwash to be Nazi. This is already and uh, uh, until after Stalingrad, he was uh, he was Nazi. This was the idea. He remained Nazi until 45. What is shown by let's know. That he remains Nazi, and this began became uh, uh, the, 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 the conspiracy of Heidegger after the war, even after the war. And uh, in a sense, uh, this uh, project is the Ernest Project, uh, which is uh, the title of uh, the series of uh, um, esoteric books uh, published by the Guard, the, the uh, publishing house of, uh, uh, of uh, the Foucault Pendulum, because. Uh, politically, Heidegger was convinced that Bonn Germany would have not a longer life than Weimar Germany. And Heidegger made up, up his own conspiracy. He wrote mysterious <coughs> texts, published them mostly after his death, and finally, once the great hermetic corpus had seen the line in a post-catastrophe Germany, he would release the hermeneutical key, the Rosetta Stone, that would allow the decipher the true meaning of its difficult, and they, I think futile sometimes, meditation on the last goal, the event, abandonment, gestet, gefeel, lichtung, and so on and so forth. Because uh, what is uh, really surprising in uh, notebooks uh, is uh, that uh, they are not, uh, uh, so to speak, uh, uh, discovered notwithstanding how he decided that at the very end of the publication of this Gesamtam's Garden, there will be published the blank notes in which all is clear, all is explained. Uh, and the uh, supposition is I will uh, publish uh, the, the first book uh, of uh, my Gesamtam's Garden, which appeared in 1975. Then, uh, after 20 years, or oh, more than 20, 40 years, uh, things have changed. Again, uh, the will uh, is up for Nazi party and uh, appears the, uh, uh, otherwise why to publish something which is really problematic now is uh, uh, politically, politically extremely difficult for someone to work on higher after this. So, why make this uh, uh, act that seems stupid if you don't think that uh, there will be an historical change within 40 years? Uh, uh, the political testament of uh, uh, Hitler said that uh, within 40 years the world will uh, uh, see, understand how right we were. So, is uh, uh, and. Uh, I spoke about uh, a Rosetta Stone because, for instance, you see in uh, uh, the letter of humanism, 1946, so is the moment in which uh, Heidegger is processed by the French authorities in Freiburg, but at the same time, Jean Gaufré uh, 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 tried to, uh, so to speak, uh, to represent him on the uh, philosophical scene in France. Uh, and he uh, answered in this letter, he says, the Heimat laws it wird ein Weltschicksal, the laws of, uh, uh, of uh, Heimat, of, uh, of country, will be, uh, of border, will be uh, the destiny of all the world, which was, if uh, we read uh, the black uh, notebooks, uh, the problem of Jews, because Jews are the Heimat laws. Uh, the, the Jew, the international Jew, uh, and uh, uh, this translated means the Jews as won the war. But he says this to Jean Gaufré and uh, French intellectual with uh, Tovarniki uh, uh, Revnik uh, that uh, uh, takes the movie of uh, Heidegger, The Black Forest. So all this, uh, say, radical, chic, and leftist contest, 
he says something which is uh, radically uh, uh, he said, for instance, in Black Notebooks, that uh, Husserl was not able to understand uh, Zeitgeist because it was Jew, because it was uh, uh, I must lose. Uh, so you can, and it is not strange because also when he says that his followers in France say that when they have to think, they have to think in German, not in French. It's again this idea that uh, to be uh, a thinker is to be grounded in uh, a culture. And uh, this, uh, this idea, uh, as really the idea of a conspiracy, a perfect idea of conspiracy, because it's like a, a novel of Gide. Uh, there are all uh, these uh, sophisticated intellectuals of Paris that goes to uh, the, uh, uh, the, the Nazi in uh, Schwarzwald and say, ah, what do you think about the, 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 the new age? Well, it's a problem because Heimat Losing will invent Schicksal. Uh, in, in a sense, uh, it's exactly not that, uh, for instance, the journal of uh, Faubourg Noyer uh, was uh, uh, edited by Pierre Klosowski. And the Kosovsky has an interpretation of Nietzsche's thoughts as conspiracy, because also in the G novel there is a conspiracy. But this is a, a conspiracy in act. So uh, it has been said that uh, uh, Heidegger's antisemitism is uh, a metaphysical antisemitism. I believe that this is a silly uh, uh, sentence, because uh, uh, in this sense we can say that, for instance, Goering antisemitism is an aeronautical antisemitism, uh, Goebbels antisemitism is a, 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 a mediatic antisemitism. Each one has its own antisemitism. Uh, uh, and of course, uh, Heidegger was a metaphysical antisemitism. As such, is uh, a transformation of a sentence, which is serious, of Derrida into the spirit, who says, note that uh, Nazism is not something that uh, comes from a barbary from uh, outside. It's a part of uh, or part. This is true, but you cannot say that in order to understand uh, antisemitism and maybe to overcome antisemitism, you have to read uh, uh, Heidegger. And um, especially this introduces a kind of uh, determinism. If you are German, then you are antisemitic. Uh, Consider that uh, Dreyfus was in Paris, and uh, uh, for instance, uh, uh, Thomas Mann uh, was German. And uh, so there, there is. Uh, uh, so I would not speak about uh, a uh, metaphysical antisemitism, but about a metaphysical conspiracy, a Heidegger theory of metaphysics is uh, a, a conspiracy theory. Consider, for instance, his theory of the truth as aletheia, as not non nascondimento, non covering, no covering. This idea that uh, the truth is something that uh, prima facie is always uh, hidden, and you should go through in order to reveal it. This is a typical uh, uh, mythic, uh, mystical and conspiracy theory. Uh, uh, it's a conspiracy theory of truth. We have the correspondent theory of truth and the conspiracy theory of truth. And the conspiracy theory of truth is Aletheia in Heidegger. Uh, Ufer Bock and Heidegger for uh, German speakers. No, but this, this is really impressive. Uh, it's, uh, a uh, uh, declaration we can find in Black uh, uh, Note. Is it not in 1927, the publication date of Bing and Time, that they began to observe silence in thought? But in Bing and Time, and never before and always. So there was a, 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 a project of being sick of secrecy. And in Black Notebook, he explains that his message was never and for good reason communicated an immediate way and we stand in the invisible front of secret spiritual journey. 
He said, explain, why you wrote in a so obscure way? Because it's stupid. No, it's not stupid at all. Uh, he's, uh, he's making a conspiracy and plans uh, 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 the appearing of uh, the truth after that. Uh, this is what uh, Hitler principle excuse me, that we find in Mein Kampf, uh, read and annotated by Heidegger. Uh, German, learn to keep quiet. This secrecy, in the intention of Heidegger, responded to another secret, the secret spiritual warfare conducted by Judaism, which one must correspond to with another mystical and philosophical world. Now, when uh, um, uh, Hugo, uh, in his presentation, said that uh, uh, conspiracy has never had alone, you have always two conspiracies, the first conspiracy and the conspiracy against the conspiracy, uh, it was uh, this kind of uh, uh, phenomenon. Okay. Right. Um, so, for instance, to take the metaphysical conspiracy. On stage, when uh, Heidegger uh, gives his lecture in uh, uh, the end of the 30s, beginning of the 40s, we have uh, Heraclitus, Plato, Aristotle, Descartes, Kant, <coughs> and Hegel. But behind the scenes, in the dressing room, we have Dostoevsky, Junger, Spengler, and who knows who else. And I have an idea because he annotated the, the uh, 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 Mein Kampf. By the way, I went uh, in a, to a conference in Germany on uh, Heidegger Black Books, and I discovered that uh, I did not read something that Heidegger read, namely Mein Kampf. So that uh, I buy uh, my camp in a library in Italy, and then at the Frankfurt Airport they found <laughs> <laughs> a copy of my camp, uh, but they, they don't care. It's not important. Maybe they did. Uh, the, the, there was part of the conspiracy, uh, but. Uh, uh, and then in the, the line, you have Guderian, because this is a passage on his seminar of Nietzsche, published, uh, uh, given uh, in uh, 1941 and uh, published in 1961. Uh, it is uh, uh, the end of the war to the, uh, in the France, the invasion of France, the German invasion of France, and he says, these days, we are witnessing a mysterious law of history, mysterious law of history, that is, that one day a people no longer lifts up the metaphysic triggered by its own history. And it happens just at the moment when this metaphysics has changed into the unconditional. So uh, uh, the, the, the mystery, the mysterious game of the world, make it so that the people who invented the technique, the people of Descartes, has been destroyed by the tanks of Guderian. And this is uh, uh, pretty good, because it's the realization of uh, a law of history, not just a political event. So uh, it could be very interesting. Uh, uh, I am almost uh, just uh, no more than five minutes. Uh, it, it, it's also interesting to understand uh, why this kind of uh, conspiracy uh, could become a leftist conspiracy. This is uh, this became a kind of uh, uh, metaphysical Lili Marlene because Lili Marlene was a Nazi song and became uh, uh, and Heidegger was exactly like uh, Lili Marlene because in fact he was Nazi but he became uh, uh, the leader of uh, uh, the uh, the leftist uh, philosophers and uh, one uh, can. Uh, this is a good question. Why leftist philosopher was uh, so interested in Heidegger? Uh, on the one hand, for the reason that was suggested by Hugo this morning, because uh, to be leftist is to uh, share at least uh, uh, the 80% of uh, 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 so to speak, uh, uh, right-wing uh, uh, politics, because uh, you hate the bankers, uh, you are radical, you, and there are many ways in which, uh, and maybe you are also vegetarian, you, you don't smoke. Uh, uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> there is a, no, no, but, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, you, you share at least one quality with Hitler. Uh, <laughs> 
Uh, uh, he, he was not monogamous. Yes, uh, uh, yes, but uh, but this is a part. Of, this is this was a, the latest uh, part of the story. <laughs> and uh, uh, but uh, uh, nonetheless, I, I, and I believe that since uh, there was uh, the idea that uh, every kind of revolution is uh, leftist, but if you kind, if you find someone who is very radical uh, extremist, uh, like uh, Heidegger or Karl Schmidt, then it would be an excellent uh, uh, political uh, uh, star for uh, your, uh, your research. On the very end, <laughs> uh, it's not uh, simply a question of, uh, 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 say, of misunderstanding. Uh, it's also a question of uh, an hermeneutics that is part of uh, uh, this uh, uh, metaphysical conspiracy. I will uh, show you a single aspect of uh, this. Uh, um, you have, uh, I said, a, a metaphysic, a, a conspiracy theory of truth, and then a conspiracy theory of interpretation. For instance, uh, there is uh, one of uh, the discourse of Heidegger, uh, it is uh, uh, 17 May uh, 33, and he ends uh, 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 with uh, to our great Führer Adolf Hitler, a German sick hide. Of course, he was the rector, he was Nazi, Hitler was Nazi, and uh, uh, they all agreed to say sick hide. No wonder on, on, on this point they could not say hello, goodbye, uh, see you later. Uh, that's all for the power of the soil. But uh, uh, publishing this discourse, uh, Francois Fetier, uh, in a, a book on, uh, with uh, the, 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 the uh, political discourse of Heidegger, puts this note, it is really revealing. Today, today, the expression Skiheil is still used with no political connotation whatsoever by skiers to wish one another <laughs> Which is surprising because he said, I did not say that. Ski high. <laughs> to, to our great fear Adolf Hitler, a German ski high. It's stupid, it was May. Uh, uh, it's very hot in uh, Freiburg in May. But he was just, just saying uh, see high. And this <coughs> idea that uh, we can manage the interpretation and say, no, maybe he did it really said see high. He possibly said ski high. If you know ski high, it's not so so heavy ski high. Uh, there, there is not simply a, a, a question of uh, Heidegger uh, interpretation. For instance, uh, and uh, I end uh, the sister of conspiracy. This is Baudelaire, Mon Coeur is a new. There is uh, this uh, impressive passage who says, a pretty conspiracy to organize for the extermination of Jewish race. The Jews, the librarians, and the witnesses of redemption. This is what uh, uh, Baudelaire writes. Well, uh, Benjamin puts this passage in Passagenwerk to say, Goloiserie, it's just a Goloiserie, and uh, uh, Pichois, uh, the editor of uh, uh, Baudelaire in the Pleiade, <coughs> say, well, uh, it's a passage of difficult interpretation, <laughs> a difficult interpretation, but any anti-Semitism is to be excluded. <laughs> Thank you.
uh, that uh, destroys the present state of things. So everything, this is a domain, everything is described by bourgeois society. It's good because, okay. We have uh, half an hour, maybe before uh, we may take a comment, uh, we can take one or two questions. Uh, there is, uh, it's not so, uh, so usual for a round table, but we have an, a, a, a moment, a possibility of uh, intervention by people who, who were speaking the symbolism. No, no, no. Okay. So, no, no, no. <coughs> I have only, only few bizarre remarks uh, after the, the, the three presentations. And <coughs> for Maurizio, uh, according to Heidegger, Aletheia is a word not only for the German language but also for the Greek language. I would like to know. But Heidegger could think today of the Tsipras uh, conspiracy, conspiracy, but uh, uh, <coughs> I don't know. Uh, I was uh, uh, struck by the, the fourth truth in Anchati and I reflected on the fact that Anchati became famous for the emblemata and so for a book uh, made, made uh, mainly by images. The first edition was without images. They were written later. I don't know if it has something to, to know, to do with this uh, defiance uh, of uh, Anchati against images, but it's curious that he didn't put images in. He believed that on the, on the affability of the, of the spoken uh, emblem. Apropos of Red Brigades, uh, there is another uh, conspiracy story. Everybody, when they kidnapped the uh, Moro, the event was celebrated by a thing prepared you know, as a geometrical uh, manifestation of power, of geometrical power. Geometrical power is interesting to prepare this <coughs> coming back today with the Ladini um, group. Um, but everybody, and undoubtedly, without this celebration, it was a well executed bad property, very, very efficient. Succeeded in doing that. And a lot of people said uh, the, the, the newspaper was full, full at the time of this question. How could have people of 30 years or less uh, succeeded in such a marvelous uh, technical operation? Therefore, there must be behind that the, uh, the, uh, the old man, the grand Andreotti. Andrea Nobody thought that at the same time a lot of people of 30 years were uh, president of, uh, of uh, corporations, uh, were Nobel Prize, uh, and so, so there was nothing exceptional in the fact that people of 30 years were able to organize a good bank robbery. But if they have recognized it and excluded the old man, they, we were obliged to recognize that the Red Brigade were our soul. That's another effect of the conspiracy uh, theory. We are not guilty, so there must be uh, some, some of the X. Um, now, I want to, to, to remark that uh, today we are concluding this symposium on, on conspiracy. The next uh, Milanesiana <coughs> event in Milan, which is an event that includes many Nobel Prize writers, uh, has lasted for 50 days at the end, between the end of June and the mid of July, uh, it is uh, dedicated to obsession and uh, including uh, conspiracies uh, among the, the things so that I am obliged to pick up conspiracy at the time. So I'm trying to, to, to change a little my speech of today into another one, not to repeat myself, but the, the, the main topic is all the same. Then at the um, Camoni Festival of Communication, which is dedicated to, to languages, there will be also an intervention of conspiracy. I have 
received a, a letter by Antoine Febvre, who is the uh, professor of the occult theories of the Sorbonne. These kind of people who halfway they believe in what they're doing, halfway they are critical, and they are organizing for the end uh, of next uh, year, as, uh, in the decades of Cerisi La Salle in Normandy, a 10 days devoted to conspiracy. So, I have the impression there is a conspiracy about uh, conspiracies, uh, which, uh, uh, which tells me that uh, probably was writing and elaborating the motto, all the paranoids are persecuting me. Uh, <laughs> um, but probably there is also another reason for this, that the internet is so full of conspiracies that people is in a way reacting. There is a sort of, of, of a biological reaction, stop. And so I, I hope that this impossible too will be known with this and a series of <laughs> critical endeavors. Uh, so thank you. We are, we are concluding this, uh, this morning, uh, which is a Tirana, uh, Torino University contribution to the our conspiracy about conspiracy about conspiracy and uh, I, I thought uh, there was uh, I, I found the, the, the intervention of the colleagues uh, very uh, very stimulating very 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 very, very useful uh, I hope we will uh, we continue our our works and collaboration with Boston University and uh, I, I give uh, to everybody the room for this afternoon where a long conspiracy of me and Massimo is able to take Umberto uh, Eco uh, uh, another time to Torino to, to, to University and have a second degree here which is absolutely something uh, um, conspiratory in a way.